Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to the Roseanne Barr podcast. Well, I'm really excited and so relieved, I have to tell you about the family drama we went through uh, with the uh, nervousness of having the guest I have today, who I'm very excited to speak with and have uh, the opportunity to hear a lot of stuff that we don't normally get to hear for all of us the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> as they like to call people who like the truth. Anyway, um, Rudy Giuliani, hi. <laughs> it's a great honor to be with you. Oh, you see, my is Absolutely, I love you and have always loved you. I've always loved you, too. You're terrific. You're just terrific. What a great, what a great American. Thank you so much. And I mean that. I, I so appreciate it. I really, really do. I, I really do. Thank you. Well, you are America's mayor. <laughs> you know, every time I just see you or hear your name, it goes back, you know, yeah, it goes back sure. to that day. Yeah, it's hard and, not to, uh, right? Right? And it's indelibly etched there, you know, your leadership and your compassion and your ability to uh, affect everything toward a positive outcome. I was astounded. You won't believe this, Rudy, but I was on this uh, turn off all the media kind of meditation thing on on that day. And uh, so I didn't even find out about it till September 12th. Oh my. Uh -huh. My ex-husband called me, he goes, what do you think of all this stuff? I go, what? He goes, are, are you, have you not seen what's happened? And I go, where? What? He goes, turn on the television. Wow. That's, and I turned it on. And, of course, it was a day later. And, you know, it, it was the repetition of all yeah, of Yeah, but you, you, had, you had the, the, the whole story of the day by that time. Yeah, but it was wow. set by then, so yeah. it wasn't so chaotic right. as people who had seen but the thing that impressed me as this person who's very obviously affected by my working class background and blue collar people and their heroism and that being disrespected so often on television and at large. But the thing that I was so moved by was here was all these Wall Street guys in their suits. It still moves me. Mm -hmm. And... And they were just holding out water to the people who do all the honest work that makes everything go. Oh, to the true. firemen, to very the policemen. True. And I thought, oh my, this is some amazing thing happening in our country that the people who do the work, the first responders, you know, the people who save our lives, they're being respected and honored by those people who so look down on them normally. I thought, this is kind of good and uh then i saw you and uh it it's just uh to me i'm gonna remember that part of it because it was just so hopeful and so good and there you were in the middle of it and here you are still in the middle of <laughs> everything God. uh you know it reminds me of two things about that day what you're saying For, first of all you you'd be very interested in knowing a story that uh, is known but not as prominently as it should Around 5 o'clock that afternoon, uh, I was at the site with all of my commissioners, and uh, we were trying to organize what we knew was going to be all night forever. Yeah. Uh, so we were getting the uh, lighting equipment in and trying to make it safe, because below the ground there were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, my God. And uh, any person standing there at that point was at risk of going into the ground. Oh, because in fact, we had some that thing? went in and we had to pull them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you didn't know where to stand. All of a sudden, I see um, on uh, West Side Drive, I see a whole large number of men uh, walking toward us. Like, I'm going to say 300 in a group. And uh, that, as they get closer, I realize they're either highway workers or construction workers, or, and I'm what are they here for? Mm -hmm. So I walked up to them with my police commissioner and fire commissioner, and it was a guy who was a leader, and I said, what are you doing here? He said, We're, uh, uh, we came to volunteer. Wow. I said, well, you know, to volunteer, you've got to be a fireman or, or a rescue worker, and you have to have the right equipment. He said, well, you, you can give us equipment. 
you know, uh, what we thought was, this is the way we can contribute because we can lift heavy things. Mm, there were construction workers who were building oh. the skyscrapers. Wow. And uh, mm. they came to put themselves in a place where it was a 20% chance you were going to lose your life if you went in there. Man. Uh, and uh, they said, oh, and we don't, you know, we never use, a, we never use uh, uh, any kind of protection. We just, we'll go right in. I said, no, no, I'm going to get your protection. But I, I, you can't imagine what this has done for our morale. I saw all the firefighters that were working, looking up. And it's like, um, I guess it's like in a movie where you see the cavalry coming to save you. Oh, yeah. But they were all just working people. They weren't mm -hmm. like uh, firefighters, police officers, soldiers. We had plenty of those, mm -hmm. and they were great. And they're all pretty much working class families. Mm -hmm. I was, my, my, my family were four police officers and a fire captain, my wow. uncles. So I wow. grew up mm -hmm. with that. The, 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 second, the second one uh, that I think you'd, you'd, you'd appreciate is the fact that the, from the very, very beginning, it was clear that this was an attack on uh, not just New York, but on America. Yeah. And I was not sure in the first couple of hours whether America could handle it. Yeah. The, uh, um, could this generation do what two generations ago right. did in the Second World War? I wonder that. And around the same time I saw that picture, someone showed me, the, I didn't see the scene live, they showed me the picture of the firefighters putting up a flag, and they had a debris. They had debris below them, and it looked like Iwo Jima. Hmm. Yeah, it did. And mm -hmm. I looked at that, and I said, they got the same blood. Wow. These are the sons and grandsons and great-grandsons of the people who went through World War II and saved the world from Nazism. Yes, absolutely. I just said that very same thing they yesterday. Got, they, they got the same thing in them. And when you think about it, even, even now... Those are the people we ignore. Right. We listen to all the jerks. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, there's I all said the jerks, but we don't listen to them. You, you go talk to them, and they're, they're, they're ready to go do anything for America. Well, that's why I want to talk to you, because people are saying that people are so soft here. And maybe they have been softened up, at least the ones we see. But I reminded them of, what is it called, Jake Dunkirk? Yeah. I mean, they knew they were going to die. They knew they had to do it, and they did. And we have that. Well, we sure and do. And so I think we're at such a scary time in our country. It takes us takes us back to there. So I'm glad to see you for that. Yeah, I, I have no doubt I about it. I want to talk to you about all that. Yeah, I have no doubt about it. If you go into the into the middle of America, which is most of America, except the one that makes noise, the part that makes noise. If you go into the middle of America, it's no different. I mean, they're 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 ready to die for the country. They're, they 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 don't want their children uh, taken away from them and have the state bring them up in schools. No. Uh, frankly, they're as anti-Marxist and anti-communist as they've always been. The difference is that a lot of our Democrat leadership has become. I mean, they're following a Karl Marx playbook. Yes, they are. And they're f following it as if, you know, as if it were uh, the Bible. It's their Bible because it it's like Bible. a religion to them, except it's an anti-religion. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in morality. Uh, they don't believe in uh, the value of life. And they believe they are each individually God. Well, they live in a fantasy world that doesn't exist on the planet. It's all in their own heads. I know because I was one of them. I was raised <laughs> like that. But like I say, my parents were, uh, you know, I guess they were first immigrant, born Jewish, American immigrants, and they were all socialists. I mean, but like I say, and I was raised that way too, but it was a different socialist because that one was about building a middle class, right, a safety people. net, and decent pay as, you know, in a union. This has nothing to do whatsoever with labor rights. It has nothing to do with that, I say, this ain't your granddaddy's socialism. And so I began to crack that programming, and it was painful. And mm -hmm. I mean, to see, uh, for me, to I ran as president for president in 2012 right. on a socialist thing because I wanted to run against Obama, who scared me. Right. But and I was it, like, well, let's get naked if we're going to 
talk about socialism, not that fake stuff right. you're talking about, Obama. And I confronted all of that as a, as a real socialist, right? And then I saw what was frightening to me was the amount of Jew hating that was within the left. It wow. was just starting. And uh, everywhere I would go in America to speak about, uh, you know, Americans and profit sharing, which, you know, in some way they could say is a socialist thing. But it's right. Yes. It's the sure. right thing. Sure. Right? So everywhere I would go or to speak, these people who were, were American, they would what their first question to me was, what about the Israel, the, like robots, what about the Israeli occupier of the West Bank and the Palestinian homeland? What about that? What is your, and they would, their voice would be like this, like a robot. And I'd say, excuse me, what about stand your, what do you know about stand your ground gun laws in this uh, state that you live in, you know? Right. Uh, what? Because that was around the Trayvon Martin time. Right. I go, what do you actually know about the law in your community that controls your entire life and you want more of that shit? Right. What do you know about reality? And they'd be like, don't try to say, change the subject from the racist apartheid state of Israel. So I had to get out of there. And plus I had a Muslim woman as my campaign manager and and somebody from nation of a man from nation of islam here in america who was a pro-american muslim man mm -hmm. who who did all these great things in texas for children and education and and a black a black woman as my also campaign manager well they these white people on the left they got in their face and they said they called them not the right kind of Arab, not the right kind of black man, not the right kind of black women. And I was like, you're ungodly racism. I can't stand it. Yeah, it's absolutely all pro true. projection. And so that's why I left. And, and my platform was very much a populist platform. Then I, you know, I had interviewed Trump in 1998 on my talk show, and I told him at the time, had him and Michael Moore on as guests, and we all three debated, because back in that time, it was legal to debate and converse. <laughs> you know, it's still legal. We were talking about capitalism versus, uh, you know, all we were talking about economic systems. And I, and Trump won like a SOB, he flattened big fat michael like you know pancake <laughs> and um i said you ought to run for president and he he shrugged me off well here it comes i had just run for president then i hear trump speak and he's saying so much of what i said that I was like, oh my God, he's for real. He is for real. He is. You know, it's for an amazing real. thing that pe people, um, and you can understand it because he came up as a celebrity, and they, by and large, they just trust a lot of the celebrities, uh, particularly people who would be inclined, you know, middle class people. And uh, but I think they picked up right away that he makes decisions the way uh our old-fashioned politicians used to make decisions what's right for america yeah what's right for america now, he could be right or wrong about that but that's what he's thinking about yes he is then he makes a decision and then you then you worry about the political party you don't start with the political parties are supposed to advance the good of america not the good of the political party right that's why we have it i mean uh i'll tell you one thing that bothers the heck out of me you know how they want to change the names of everything anybody who had any association with s slavery uh, like uh, G George Washington, because he didn't, because he had slaves, or uh, uh, Jefferson, who tried everything he could do to free the slaves, and he just couldn't do it. But why don't they change the name of the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party uh, promoted slavery. The Democratic Party almost crea created its its continuation in America. The Democratic Party supported the other side of the Civil War, well, and, that's and, the, why they, and, the, and the Democratic absolutely. Party did segregation. Yeah. And right Jim up until Crow. Biden, right up, the, right up until Biden, his best friend was a, I don't know, the Grand Puba, or whatever you call him, uh, in the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. So that party is completely associated with slavery. On the other hand, the Republican Party was founded to end slavery. Yeah, Lincoln. Yeah. So I mean, if they're going to go back to those days, 
Well, that's why they, they need don't a new name. To, if we no, get a, Rudy, that's why they don't want to go back. The to Cleveland those Indians days. have to change. They should change. And did you see that the actual Native Americans were petitioning that to bring the name back? Well, they don't. They don't matter. The Native Americans don't matter. The blacks don't matter. If the blacks mattered, these cities that are setting uh, records for murder, like uh, Philadelphia set a record for murder two years ago, more than ever in 250 years. Baltimore. Chicago, Chicago on weekends is like a war zone. Uh, 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 St. Louis, Baltimore, they, they're all Democratic mayors, okay. Soros, uh, Soros paid for DA. Yes, absolutely. This is all uh, because of the, of the Democrat Party and its racism. Because the people suffering the most there are black people. And when they don't care. They don't care Pelosi's about what happens to those district, black people. Because I, I had to go up there because my son went to college there. And so I'd go visit him, you know. Plus, I broke my knee and I had to live there for three months in this hotel. But I'd go outside. It was that part where, you know, downtown. Right. Everybody homeless, about 90%, they're black on the streets in Nancy Pelosi's district and then she gets down on one knee with an african scarf i almost puked yeah yeah it is disgusting they totally disfranchised and took everybody's house and they became homeless and that was their thanks and of course, for uh, Bolton democrat nancy and her husband became zillionaires based on his insider trading yep uh that uh, other people go to jail for i mean they are fabulously wealthy uh, but she comes out of a she comes out of a Baltimore political Democrat machine, machine yeah. that is an example of what's wrong with the uh, old American city. The only thing wrong with the old American city is it's a dictatorship. Right. New York City is not a, a, a democracy, a republic. It's a Democrat dictatorship. Yes, it is. It's, that uh, must break your except heart. Except for Staten Island. It. I broke through it. Well, can we ask, how did you do that? That's what I want to ask. I broke through it because, first of all, the population was a little different. This will make, this makes some difference. It was five to one Democrat when I won. It's now seven to one Democrat. And the Democrats were different. Yeah, they were. I, mean, I got a big Democrat vote. Yeah, yeah you did. I had a, I had a real uh, Democrats for Rudy group that was almost as strong as my Republican and Independent group. I couldn't get that today. No. Today, they want, the Democrats in New York want to put me in jail. They, they, they'd like to see me. They took away my law license, the Bar Association, because they are ideological Democrats uh, and Trump haters. There's a sickness. This yeah. Trump thing is a sickness. Isn't it? You know, if you just step back from it, what does the guy do that's so bad? I mean, say you don't like his personality. But now we look at the condition of the country. He didn't have any wars. We've got all those people in Ukraine. Don't like that. Those people in Ukraine would all be alive if he were president, because Putin would never have gone in if he were president. Mm -mm. I don't think there's anybody in the world that believes that. Israel too. Israel, I think you never would have had this happening in Israel. It didn't happen mm -hmm. while he was there. In fact, at this point, if he had been going forward with the Abraham Accords, you probably have a pretty darn good alliance between Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the other Arab states. Egypt. And that got was broken up completely by Biden because Biden's in love with Iran. Biden wants to say he's a friend of Israel and he, he sent hundreds of millions and he had six billion dollars headed to Iran. Iran he, was broke. Yeah. You can't tell me you're my friend if you're giving six billion dollars to somebody who wants to kill me. No. I mean, if I'm Bibi, I, I look at him and say, wait a second, I don't need a friend like that. You're giving six billion dollars to a group of people who are dead. The most important thing to them is to destroy Israel and kill Jews. And you gave them six billion dollars, pal. I know BB has to pretend, but deep down, he's got to know that this friend of, of Israel is a bunch of political crap. I mean, the guy is a complete uh, supporter of Iran, just like the one who gave Iran cash, a Prince, uh, uh, prince Barry. I call him <laughs> Prince Barry. <laughs> well, he kind of is a prince. Oh, yeah, Do you well, know he's, too he's important. the richest president we've ever had? And he's, he was a socialist. Mm -hmm. no, One he, of those kind. No, he wasn't. You, 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 you look at um, you look at them, and you say they really are communists. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at a communist party, the big top people in the communist party are millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, they are. Uh, and it isn't just like uh, uh, Z or Mao or so. There are there are what about one point five six billion people in China. 
Mm-hmm. hundred million are, uh, are communists. They're anywhere from upper middle class to fabulously wealthy. The rest of China is m- lower middle class or starving. Mm-hmm. And that's just true in every communist country. Mm-hmm. Thank you for watching our episode with Rudy Giuliani. And you know what? I really had a lot of energy. You said I was like a lo- very energetic and I'm getting more energetic. Yeah, I was going to ask if you were on drugs or something, but you told me. Well, half of it is because today is my 71st birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. And, uh, you know, so that makes me happy and energetic. But also, I feel like I'm getting a new lease on life, kind of, because of the Field of Green stuff. Yeah, you've been taking it. Livia, come here. Your granny's been feeling better and playing with you more because Field of Green. She's going to yeah, tell you about it. Yeah, I have more energy to chase after her and uh, cater to her non-ceasing demand. I've been noticing you've been scooping it into juice, and, I, and you were talking about scooping it into wine. They don't recommend that. They want you to do water. Yeah. But as long as you're getting your whole 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 fruits and vegetables, I'm probably happy about it. Yeah, but you I, really do like it. I feel like I have a glow or a more of a lust for life kind of healthier thing going on, and I'm looking forward to things too. So I think it's helping my outlook and my attitude also. I do too. I mean, you're you're 71. Because I'm never going to sit there eating all the six cups of fruits and vegetables. I don't have time for that. What with my smoking and blogging. <laughs> I think that's why they picked you as a sponsor. They're but like, who also, can we get? It, yeah, it's kind of decreasing my need for cigarettes, too. I have to say that. Well, I think there's truth to that. They, they've shown studies that people that smoke cigarettes, you know, it's tied to emotional things. But also, there's studies, I can't remember where they are, but uh, it's, it's when you're nutrient deficient nicotine craving actually becomes stronger. So is that true? It is true. Well, I mean, according to this one thing I read on the internet years ago, I don't know how, I mean, I read it. Uh-huh. Um, but if you ever notice when you're really full, uh-huh. not stuffed, because then you have to smoke when you're stuffed because then you get the stomach aches. But when you're actually like sate and, and satiated, uh, you don't really want to smoke. You ever notice that? No, you but I that? have noticed that I, <laughs> I've never been satiated. Yeah. But you know, no, but I, I just feel healthier and like not so sluggish. So maybe I don't feel like sitting around and smoking. I feel like running after your kid and, and uh, having fun. She likes me to chase her. She does. Well, tell them about the exciting, because it is a sponsor. So tell the people. Uh, what kind of deal you're giving them. Well, I am giving them a deal to help them get started. Hey, there's an exciting offer right now. Field of Greens is offering a Black Friday discount. 30% off when you use code VIP. Don't miss this massive sale. 30% off when you visit fieldofgreens.com and enter the code VIP. That's fieldofgreens.com VIP. Let's get back to the interview with Rudy because it's it's going great. Rudy's a blast. I know. I want to ask funny. him a few more questions. So let's get back to it. Look at Black Lives Matter, which is a communist organization. Yeah. They were they were doing it before they were even established. They were stealing all the money. Mm-hmm. She had three houses. Patrice Colores had become a communist uh, uh, a dignitary, dignitary, wealthy person. Yeah. And that's what Obama is. Yeah. Obama is fabulously wealthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't earn it. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't building. He wasn't building uh, 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 skyscrapers and towers and that could go. That could. Uh, Did you know that his uh, step adopted father Lolo Satoro was Bush's partner in the founding of Halliburton? I didn't know that. Yeah. How do you like I them apples? That. You did know? No, I didn't know that. Oh, I can't believe there's something you didn't know, Rudy. Yeah, One I didn't know that. Roseanne. There you go, Roseanne. <laughs> When you dealt with the mafia in New York, though, because that's one of the things that made you famous, right? Yes. Can I ask but you a question? But isn't that the Democrat? Well, that's what I'm getting at. Were, were they more terrifying to deal with than Democrats? <laughs> oh, very interesting. <laughs> they were more straightforward. Right. <laughs> they knew who they were. They were better to their grandchildren. That's than, true. Uh, than Joe, who doesn't recognize uh, the little granddaughter, who, who the psychological damage being done to that kid uh, has got to be terrifying. Yeah, but think about it think about what ain't being done to her i think that she's lucky she's kept away from them well yeah i don't know the the, the poor woman involved there wants to the, the name and i you know I'd, if i were a lawyer i advise i'd advise her 10 years from now that name is going to be the worst president in american history yeah. the president who except uh, for presidents in time of war lost the most american lives uh, mm. the american president who almost made us a dictatorship um he he and his administration and Obama are exactly what the founding fathers were most worried about. Absolutely. I mean, you can almost, if you read when they go off on how this could end, 
They say it couldn't ha can't happen outside, it can happen inside. It can happen inside by a dictatorship of the majority. And yeah. that's what they're trying to, they're trying to create it. And that's why they're bringing all these people in, because they know, they know, they, they actually know they're actually going to eventually lose the black vote. They're eventually well, going to they lose knew, it. I think they may now, Rudy, but they will. No, Rudy, check this out. I read all the time, and I have a, a little bit on the spectrum, the autism thing, okay? I mean, you know, I'm, whatever, we just say we're autistic. My younger son used to think that was artistic, and he'd always <laughs> say, she's artistic. But anyway, so I compile things. And because I ran for president, I know how I had some, in, I have inside friends. Okay, getting on ballots and such, counting stuff. Okay, here's what I think happened. They had to do what they did in 2020 because so many black people voted for Trump. That's why they did everything because they, seen, they saw it coming and they were like, oh, hell, we've lost our hold on, you know, our the people we think we own and they panicked and that's why I truckloads of ballots I don't just I don't disagree up. with you because um, I watched it start when he went I can't remember if the first speech that he gave about you have nothing to lose right if you now I did that in 93 I went to the black and Hispanic community where we were having over 2,000 murders a year, 70 to 80% in their community. They were the people dying, not the white people. Right. Uh, every year, 8% of the mur murdered uh, people in New York were white. The other 92% uh, uh, was, was everything else, 70% black. So, I mean, if, if murder goes up 100 murders, 70 are black. Mm. So, I went into the black community and I went into the Hispanic community. I was running against the first black mayor of New York the first time I ran. And I said, "What do you, you got nothing to lose to voting for me. And uh, not everybody picked it up, but a lot of people did. When he did it, it really picked up in that community. And uh, I agree with you. I think he got, and the places they picked for cheating were the crooked Democrat cities. Mm -hmm. They didn't cheat all over. Right. Think, think of the places where they, he was ahead when you went to bed. Right. How was it possibly lost every one of them? Yeah, how is it? <laughs> so he was ahead in Philadelphia crooked Democratic city. Mm -hmm. He was ahead in Detroit, crooked Democratic city. Mm -hmm. He was ahead in Atlanta, corrupt, crooked Democratic city. He was ahead in, uh, in, in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, all those cities turn. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania <laughs> flips 800,000 votes. <laughs> Actually, that's the one I didn't think they could do. I told Newt Gingrich that when the night was over. I said, I think they called it just a little too late. I thought they had made them. You know when they stopped the vote count? Yeah. The minute they stopped the vote count, that's the first thing it said to me. Oh, man, they're going to try to steal it. Uh, and I thought maybe they waited just a little too long because technically we were far enough ahead in enough states that if this were the, an election 20 years ago, they would have called those states for him. Yeah. They would have called. He, he would have had a, a um, electoral vote victory that night. Mm -hmm. Not just 20 uh, four years, four years before. Yes, yeah. Would have called it for uh, But you could tell that they were in the fix because Fox yeah. calls Arizona for right. him after two votes. <laughs> right. yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, Arizona for... Right. Now, People that, were shocked when Fox did that. That's why they don't let me on Fox. I know. I, I used to be probably their most frequent guest. Yeah, you were. And not only that, I, I helped them get established. I gave them the radio station in New York when Turner Broadcasting wouldn't put them on. And Roger Ailes and uh, Rupert came to me we had our own, we had four uh, cable uh, stations, and we regulate cable in New York. And they said, this is a violation of free speech. They won't let us on. I gave them the foreign language station, and they paid me four times what I was getting for it, and the city made a big bundle off Rupert. But I got sued by Turner, and then after eight months, they settled it, and Fox had New York. Wow. wow. Now, they keep me off. Because I'll go, I'll go on there. You know, I'm, you know they want, they, they want you to go on, and uh, particularly maybe now they've changed a little. But you can't say stolen election. No, I, mean, well, I was scared to even bring it up because YouTube just barely changed their rules about being able to even say that word. Yeah, I mean, how un-American is that? 
Yeah. Wow. Well, that's why Trump and everybody else is in trouble because they questioned the election just like Hillary did every day for four years after well, she Well, I'm lost. indicted for that. Yeah. I know. That, and the ca- penalty would be uh, 20 years and I'm 79 years old, so I die in jail. Uh, Fanny, Fanny, I, I can't remember her last name. Fanny Willis. Oh, yeah, the uh, uh, pretend district attorney in yeah. one of the most crooked counties in America uh, wants to put me in jail until I die. Uh, let's compare what she's accomplished as DA and what I accomplished as a prosecutor. <laughs> uh, uh, she's accomplished zero, and I accomplished something. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but Rudy, you you didn't trend on Twitter every single day talking about we got him now, Russia, Russia, Russia. You weren't in that. That was able to hold America's attention for since and it was all 2016. On, and, all and, bullshit. And Rose, it was completely 100 percent not only untrue. Yeah. Invented and paid for. Yeah. <laughs> By Hillary. You know, I didn't know that last part. I did. One of the reasons I defended him, I volunteered to defend him was. He's been my friend for 30 years. Uh, my son is very close to him. And uh, I was with him for the last four months of the campaign, o- almost from dawn to when he went to bed. And I knew there was no Russian collusion because if there was, I would have, I'd, I'd have felt it. I'd have seen it. I would have known it. He's not a man who hides things. No, he's definitely not. Uh, he would have talked about it. Yeah. First of all, he wouldn't have thought it was wrong. I mean, if he did it, he would have thought it was okay. And, and He it- doesn't do anything he thinks is wrong. That's what people don't get. Because he, if he did, he would feel bad because he knows he has to talk about I, it. I mean, I was his lawyer, and he had. I, I, there are times, of course, it's privileged. He would come to me and say, uh, 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 tell, get me an opinion on what's, what's uh, legal. And you would give him the opinion, and he would follow that. To of the- course. And I remember another time when somebody recommended doing something that was outrageous. And he, I mean, he just th- threw them right out of the White House. Also, there were people that stopped supporting him. He never talks about this. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, people that stopped supporting him because he was too hard on China. And I'm talking about I'm sure. hundreds of millions. It's basically, he told them in a nice way. I would have said, you know, go to hell. Uh, he said, he just ignored them. I just said, no. And they said, you know, you'd do far better if you'd soften up a little. You'd, cu- you'd raise a lot more. And Biden wouldn't be in- out raising you the Democrats if you went a little easier on China. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he basically said, I'll, I'll, n- I'll never do that. Yeah. And, I, and I, I have a much worse temper. I mean, I was ready to go punch him in the face and beat him up because I thought they were traitors for doing that. They are. They are. Yeah, they are, 100%. I mean, I, I just think that people don't realize, and I didn't realize until maybe five, six years ago, how brilliantly, and evil, evil but brilliant, China invaded us. Oh, didn't it? took them like They own our universities. Yeah. They own a lot of our companies. because they our, own our, com- ports. Our, our, com- our companies want the profits in China because they see it as five times America. I've been told that. Mm-hmm. by Republicans and Democrats, you know, uh, we can give up our business in America and we can make five times more in China. They're making the wrong bet they, because uh, they don't realize the Chinese economy has a, a, a hydrogen bomb yeah. right in it. And it's, it's those uh, seven or 800 million people that can't eat. Yeah. They're going to rise up at some point. <laughs> it's just at some point, China's going to have to do something about them if it wants to lead the world. And uh, they don't factor that into the Chinese economy. If you factored that into the Chinese economy, it's actually an extremely weak economy. And they a lot of people are seeing that out. into our economy either, do they? No, they don't. They they um, they tr- they try very very hard to hurt our economy, so we'll become part of S- the Soros, Klaus Schwab, uh, Barack Obama, one world. Yeah. That's where they're headed. Mm-hmm. They're headed, all that stuff about burning down uh, uh, statues, burning flags, mm-hmm. taking a knee, saying terrible things about America. I mean, Biden goes out and says America is systemically racist. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what that means. He doesn't know what it means. He didn't know what it meant before he became demented. I'll tell you about him in a minute. But what that means is we're all racist. Can you imagine telling your country you're all racist? I'm not, don't, don't, don't talk for me. I'm not racist. I, I grew up. With white kids, black kids, Irish kids, German kids, Jewish kids, Italian kids, 
uh, the one who was on my side was my friend. <laughs> right. And when we had fights, if you were in on my real side, world, if you were on my, if the black works. kid was on my side, he was the best guy in the uh, right. there. That's how it works in the real world. And that's the way it works in the real world. And I, I, I just don't evaluate people on color. It, it, I, and I think people who do, I think there's something wrong with them. So, you know what it is? They do it because they don't live in integrated neighborhoods. That's the real yeah. fact. Isn't about that interesting? The Democrats. Yeah. I always made sure, like I'm like Trump. I think of Trump as being on the autism spectrum himself is that interesting it, there's a certain way we are with like people like me and probably you too rudy i gotta go check it we have to <laughs> no we no, but I, really those of us who talk a lot about <laughs> what's inside well we have to tell the truth because we'll look like you know whatever we say has to be true because we don't remember if we lied we'll just say it it'll just come out you know because we just have to say 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 so if we're doing something bad we'll say that too so we have to have a clean conscience in order to live you know we have to do he, that you're absolutely right there are, he, he will tell stories about himself that make him don't make him look like uh perfect like uh, uh, things they're not wrong or illegal but things that are not flat we'll just say it Everybody else would hide it, you know, the, the usual politician would hide it, and Biden would would make it up completely. Right. I mean, you're not going to get out of him things like, um, uh, you know, he, he went to the top of a tree during battle and gave a uh, and gave a medal to a to a guy who refused it. Or turned, that he it was turned, under sniper fire in Afghanistan. Yeah, which, and it turns out the guy <laughs> he never gave the guy. Uh, not only wasn't he there, he didn't. He wasn't on the battlefield. <laughs> Uh, he wasn't even the guy who gave who gave the medal to this soldier who turned it down. It was done in the White House, and the guy who gave it was Obama. And the guy originally said he didn't think he was worthy, but it wasn't him. It was Obama who did it. So that that thing in the White House becomes him on a battlefield, almost getting killed, because this is a truly sick man. I I've known him since 1981, but I even employed his, his one of his nieces in, in City Hall. I worked on the 1994 crime bill with him, hey. uh, and I helped write the 1994 crime bill because it was actually written in 1982 under Reagan, and I worked for President Reagan, who was my hero. And uh, his college classmate was my chief of staff, and that's how we got to know each other. When I got introduced to him, uh, he brought me over and he said, I want you to meet him. He's a really nice guy, but boy, is he dumb. <laughs> he was the dumbest guy in our law school class. He cheated his way through. He said he was top of the class. And the, right? and the, wor and the well, that's why he did, because he has a chip on his shoulder. This is a guy who grew up as the dumbest kid in the, the neighborhood, the dumbest kid in the class. That's why you get that. I have a higher IQ than you have. Or I was first in the class and had 35 scholarships. Well, he was second to last, and he, <laughs> and he had no scholarships, and he got left back in the third grade, and he failed out of law school and had to write a paper to get back Isn't in. He true? plagiarized on the paper, and he charmed the dean's wife, and they let him back in. And then the, the people in law school liked him because he told jokes, but didn't want to sit next to him because he cheated for, on everyone, <laughs> and he would get them in trouble. <laughs> so then I met him, and for a while I was convinced he was very, very charming, but exceedingly stupid. Yeah. I'd come back sometimes from a meeting with him, and I'd almost say to myself, did he really say that? <laughs> I would tell people to try to describe it. You know, if I say he's the dumbest man in Congress, you're not going to get it. I'm going to ask you to do the following. Think of everybody you know. In your family, you, you, you know some dumb people. Everybody does. He's dumber. <laughs> yeah. But, so that's why it's hard to tell that he's demented. <laughs> but you can tell because he never talked that he was always glib yeah he was glib. which is part of why he got in trouble because his 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 uh, words had run ahead of his mind right uh but he was very uh i wouldn't say articulate but glib so yeah, all you yeah. have to do is go back and get a speech from 10 years ago and just play his last speech and watch it. It's two different people. How about people. when he was questioning Clarence Thomas to go well, on? That's when I turned against him. That's when I realized there was a meanness to him. Oh, that it I was did, a that snide I didn't, little sneer yeah. at a black he didn't man. Believe, he didn't believe any of that. I mean, he was... He was he, I mean, he was racist. I know, and then right after he that, really was the a racist. judge said, "I feel like this is a high tech lynching." It was, and it was, and he let it happen. That's when I turned against him, in terms of, I didn't think of him as 
a dumb but nice guy. I said, there's something, there's a mean streak here. Yeah. I always knew he was a creature of whatever they put in front of him. Yeah. You know, because he couldn't think. And, uh, but now it's very, very different. Now he has a very, very serious case of dementia. But he reminds me, I mean, they call it the Biden crime family. That's true. Yeah, it is true. But he's kind of like a, somebody that would be on The Sopranos. You know, yeah. and his family too, the whole family thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, the brother in law, the brother, everybody's making money. He's got to be somewhat smart. I mean, he's corrupt as all hell. He's got to have some level of intelligence. Well, he it. has a whole, the whole, he has the whole machinery of the yeah, government you know, I behind think, him. I think he has always been run. Yeah. He, I think he is the head in, in some ways and a figurehead in another in other ways that's certainly true in the government obama runs the government yeah absolutely uh he, he even in the good times he wouldn't be capable of most of these decisions mm -hmm. uh, even if he weren't demanded obama would be running it well i think of it as obama's third term and he himself said if only i could get a sock puppet upstairs and i'd be down here in the basement with the radio he said that obama yeah i mean and you that's can, what it is you can see that um that that uh, almost insane um, caring about Iran. I mean, it's Hello. it's it's completely inconsistent with any uh, 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 future for America, Israel, or the human race. I mean, the the, human race. even compared to China and and Russia, where we've got you know leaders who are homicidal, and in a way, these are hardcore communists who you can negotiate with. They're not homicidal maniacs like this guy. This guy is leading a cult, a homicidal cult, where they'll blow themselves up in order to kill you, or they'll justify putting children in front of them, so if they die, they take out 500 children. Most of us, if we were gonna die, would try to save the 500 children. Uh, they get them killed. Well, are, communists much must have blood. That's why they get the red flag and the whole deal. They have to have never-ending revolution and blood. Yeah, and that's They're why like Iran, Iran, is, Iran, Iran is made for them. Mm -hmm. Iran is a, a destabilizer. It creates uh, tremendous problems way beyond just the Middle East. And uh, if they didn't have an Iran, they would create it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, then, and this guy supports it. I mean, I, 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 I keep thinking, you know, from all that cash that he sent, all that cash that he sent in the middle of the night. Pallets of cash. Which, when, as a prosecutor. <laughs> well, well, back in uh, what would have been, I guess, in uh, 15 and 16, when he was leaving office. He sent somewhere near $170 million in cash mm -hmm. and uh, didn't tell anybody. He had to get caught. That's what drug dealers do. And why would you give him cash? I mean, you just think, you use your mind a little. It's a government. You send it by wire. Oh, unless you're giving the money to terrorists. Because they like to have cash. Or well, you're giving it to drug dealers. They like to have cash. Gee, it helped to have been a prosecutor. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, that should... Isn't it RICO? The whole effing government well, is RICO. Obama should be under investigation for that transaction. Giving cash and hiding it. That has to be for a nefarious reason. Then think of how many people were killed as a result of that money, including Americans, because Soleimani, who Trump took out, specialized in killing Americans. Right. So, so one could say Obama paid for it. Well, the uh, American taxpayer paid for it. Yeah, for the, the killing of their own people. The, the police, the, like in your family, the firefighters. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what, what, what we went through uh, with the defunding of the police. So my, my police department now, has to worry about a much bigger threat of terrorism than ever before. Right now, there is a much greater threat of terrorism in the United States than, let's say, the day before September 11. Right. Because the day before September 11, we had a much better idea of who was in the United States. Mm -hmm. The minute that attack took place, the minute we knew it was a terrorist attack, we knew exactly who did it. Right. Now, it uh, would have been better if we had known about it before. But by knowing about it immediately, no time was wasted in protecting us against any repercussions from it. Nowadays, if there were an attack, it'd be very hard to figure out who did it because he's let in so many people and we don't know who they are. We know he's let in lots of terrorists. 
We do because know that. we've picked up more terrorists yeah. than ever before. And there's a, there's a calculation here. For every one you note, there's at least one or two more that come in secretly. Why would they? Where's the army? It's an evasion. Well, we helped them in. No, but I mean, why isn't the United States government doing anything about an invasion because and terrorists be, coming across the? Because they want, they want, they want to destabilize the United States, so that we change our form of government and become part. Well, I know all that, but, but uh, didn't chaos, people take vows to the Constitution to protect? Well, I don't think that that doesn't matter to them. That doesn't matter to them. They've broken that n- numerous times. But isn't there any time. generals that? Well, look at General Milley. General Milley said that uh, he would call China if uh, right. if Trump was going That's to attack. That's the Logan Act. That's illegal. That's uh, we're going to attack. Was going to attack China. Where the hell is? Where are those loyalties? Well, where's or, or how, the I'll FBI? Give you another one. Do, there aren't they? Uh, don't we give them our tax money to try to keep us safe from being attacked? And they're not. Do- I mean, they're arresting grandmothers. They're busy I at mean, PTA meetings. They're too busy. And, and mean, searching my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's way too scary because where is the government that's supposed to be protecting the taxpayers that pay for their salaries? Uh, in many, many places, it is no longer a government. It's a regime run by uh, Biden and run by Obama as part of the Democrat Party. I mean, so okay, you look at, did they win the commies overthrew our government? Um, pretty close to it. I mean, if you look at our economy, our economy is clearly more socialist than some socialist countries. Uh, we don't have a criminal justice system. No, I mean, no. all you have to do is look at the fact that Hunter Biden is still walking around uh, after one crime and that biden biden could have been prosecuted and put in jail in 2015 2016 all the evidence was there the witnesses were ready to come over from ukraine the fbi you will find out had the whole case and buried it they've been protecting him for years and then doing but but they indicted you yeah and then going after other people and before me how many people did they go after Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you take a guy like manafort they virtually tortured him yeah they put him in solitary confinement and they bring him back and they tell him what to say. And the man luckily ha- has enough honor to say, go, you know, go screw yourself. But I worried for my client every day because I didn't know Paul very well. And I said, gee, you know, you keep doing that. Some, a man's going to f- uh, cave. You look at the people that have caved now under much less pressure. Do you think that like, you're talking about like those are Ellis? war crimes? <laughs> oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were. They'd bring him over. And they'd, uh, they'd, have, they'd have him like in a cell for 22, 23 hours a day looking at his feet. Then they'd bring him over about every six or seven days. This is an old man. And then, and then they'd have him sit around in a nice office, have a nice meal. And then they would tell him what they, what they wanted to hear, that, that he, they believed he was the connection between Trump and Putin. Now, the mistake, all the shit they knew was fake. They're, well, the FBI, they're trying the, to get him to lie for him. Well, the FBI knew it wasn't true. No, so they're trying to make him lie for well, them. Well, they began with the assumption that he was the connection. They found out he wasn't, but they wanted him to say it anyway. Right. And, and the reality is they made a critical mistake. Manafort was very tied in in Ukraine. Right. And he was tied in with the Russian-oriented Ukrainians. Right. Therefore, they thought he was tied in with Russia, and he wasn't. Now, let me tell you how that's a bunch of as he likes to say, malarkey. Do you know, do you know the, uh, the, the, the oligarch who paid them all the money, Zolchevsky? He was a Russian-oriented Ukrainian. So the Bidens just didn't sell them out to sell out to Ukraine. They sold out to the Russian side of Ukraine right. that now has invaded Ukraine. Right. Zolchevsky was a Russian-oriented Ukrainian who had to run out of the country when, uh, when the Ukrainians took their government back and was exiled. He was paying money to Biden to have the case against his company dismissed so he could come back to Ukraine. So uh, basically, that was the whole thing was about. That bribe money wasn't for Hunter. It wasn't for, it was to get Zloshevsky's company back into Ukraine and have it not taken away from him. And it's a $30 billion company. It's worth a couple million dollars in bribes. Zloshevsky goes around Ukraine now bragging that he kept his $40 billion company for only uh, $200 million. That he paid out about $200 million in bribes, the Bidens being one of them. The the other thing that 
we don't want to bother to find out or that's when he was vice or, president or too, saint right? Zelensky doesn't want to find out this is that the president Did you say saint Zelensky? yeah because they made him a saint yeah he's surely not a saint no his mentor was the biggest money launderer in ukraine kolomoisky and uh Zelensky knows the whole story. Yeah. He knows a lot that I don't know. I can I can give you half the story and I have half the documents. He's got the whole file. Which means if he says, uh, Joe, I need 60 bill. Joe says, yes, sir. Uh, Joe, I need another 20 bill. I don't know. You, you want to see the other pictures of Hunter? You know, they don't have everything. Okay. Er they don't have everything. You know, ding, what, what, what about the, ding, ding, what about ding. the uh, foreign bank accounts? Joe, you know we put a lot of money in foreign bank accounts for you. And the FBI uh, did you a favor and never interviewed the woman who knew it, even though they knew she might get killed. They're probably hoping she got killed. But I have the bank account numbers. What do you think would happen if we started opening those bank accounts? You better give me the 60 bill. Now, I'm not saying that's happening. But he's compromised. But it is happening. That could happen. <laughs> I'm but what about China? Allegedly. Allegedly. Now, I'll, give you one, I'll give you one for which he should be impeached, prosecuted, and put in jail for the rest of his life. He gave up the Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan mm. that is 400 miles from China. Uh, you, don't, you, you don't have to be a military expert. Iran, China. To realize thing. to have an air base 400 miles from your biggest enemy is golden. And if you look at the war going on in Israel, you mm -hmm. see what proximity means, right? Mm -hmm. the, uh, mean, uh, and the weapons. Right. 400 miles. And not only was it an air base, it was one that we had put billions of dollars in. Right. And it was an A number one air base right, right virtually on the border of China. He gave it up for nothing in return. He left behind $85 billion worth of uh, 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 equipment. That, taxpayer paid that for be it being used by hamas now yeah. Oh, yeah. because the taliban the taliban didn't need that much all of a sudden the taliban became you know better armed than most of the countries in that area of the world mm -hmm. they sold half of it yeah. they were the biggest arms dealers for the last two three years selling our arms one of the groups they sold it to is hamas you've got to believe that some of that equipment that's killing israelis and some my americans family lives there. we paid for my family lives in israel I take it real personal. Yeah, I've been to Israel many, many times. I love, I love, I love Israel, and in one White House record, I'm half Jewish. Really? Yeah. Do you like that? You know, my I friend said that to me, and I said, uh, "Well, she's not Jewish at all, but she said she she's from the Midwest, so she has she talks like that, you know." And so we were hanging out, and somebody she comes running back. She's all excited. She goes, "That guy thought I was a, was Jewish." And she's all happy, and I go, trust me, it's not a compliment. <laughs> it depends on how you look at it, but yeah, being mayor of are, New York, are you liking being it? mayor of New York and growing up in a, a neighborhood that was actually was a Italian, Irish, and Jewish with friends, uh, I've, you know, I feel like I know everything about Judaism. And then when I ran, I, one of the reasons I won was the Jewish vote. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a White House Hanukkah p party, and I, uh, at the last minute, wanted to go. Because my friends were going. And they said, oh, they'll let you into the Hanukkah party. So they're being very strict this year about the parties. But I called up the president's secretary. Now, I'm his lawyer. I'd, I'd walk into the residence three nights a week. Um, so I called Madeline and I say, Madeline, could you give me uh, two tickets to the Hanukkah party? And she says, no, I can't, uh, Mr. Mayor, because you're going to the Christmas party next week. And, and Mrs. Trump uh, said we have to be very strict because last year, numerous people were double and tripling. In other words, they would go to the Hanukkah party <laughs> and two Christmas parties. So we really would like his close friends to set a good example. I said, oh, I understand that. So then I said, well, I can call the, I'll call the president and just put me in. I sat down, let me have some fun. I said, Madeline, but you know, uh, but I have to go. She said, well, why? I said, I'm half Jewish. <laughs> she said, you didn't, I, I didn't know that. I said, how do you think I got elected mayor? How do, you, <laughs> how do you think, Marilyn, a Republican could get elected in New York if he wasn't Jewish? She said, oh, what's... I said, yeah, my mother. My father, you know, was Italian and my mother was Jewish. And she said, okay, well, I'll put you down. And I got the ticket. And there's a little record there saying, 
Half Jewish. <laughs> well, if your mother was a Jewish one. Well, she wasn't. No, he lied. He lied. Oh, he lied. Name, yeah. I love that. Well, that makes you really. It was Jewish. a little. It was a little. Uh oh, uh oh. I hope the statute of limitations ran. That guy Smith is going to come <laughs> after funny, me now. Funny Willis uh -oh. is going to indict you. Wait, but you know Will you wait until I, I finish the interview, I FBI? Could get please. No. Nope. There's one no White reason House. to knock down the door with a. You don't need those machine guns <laughs> to arrest. <laughs> I wish I could get invited to an effing Hanukkah party at the White House for once in my life. I tell you what, the Never right things once. happen. The right things happen. I'll guarantee you. Uh, an, an, an invitation in, in, okay. in 20, uh, what, is, what would it be, 2025? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm holding you to it. I had to ask you a couple of questions. You mentioned uh, people flipping. Were you, were you, I don't know what you can and can't talk about. Were you talking about Jenna Ellis and Meadows or? Well, I don't know, actually. You don't know. Do, I don't do know. I don't know What's the your... truth of what they're doing. Let's get some predictions. Because I'm just saying, uh, what we've had, we've had uh, um, you know, Michael Cohen, we have this uh, this uh, uh, this cra the the crazy woman who says Trump jumped over the like he's a um, the, the, it's like Harrison Ford yeah. in Air Force and One. Die Hard. Oh, her. Yeah, she he jumped over he jumped over. There's a whole barrier there. Yeah. I don't even think a body could fit through it. But according to her, he jumped from the back seat of the limousine to the front seat, knocked a Secret Service agent aside, and grabbed the wheel. Yes. Like he's, you know, I said he's Harrison Ford in Air Force One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this, uh, 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 this woman, uh, I don't remember her. No one does. She's making all kinds of allegations against me that are completely absurd. I, I, I groped her in front of 100 people. Jeez, I didn't know about that one. Uh, in front of 100 people. <laughs> and I uh, somehow, I ex she had, a, she had a, um, a coat on because it was zero degrees out. And I put my hands all the way up her dress and her coat. Which means I would have to have gone down on my knees, oh my and God. And, uh, and and you know, and the press writes it like it's true. true. It's completely untrue. She never mentioned it until she wrote her book. I mean, she testified a hundred times, mm. didn't remember it. She put it in a book because that's the, one of the things she featured to sell her book. Now I know how crooked the publishing industry is because when I published my book, they wanted me to put two or three things in it that weren't true, and I told them I, I'm not going to do it. I'm just to hell with you. It's my book. It's my reputation, and I'm not going to do it. I'd rather not sell any books. And th this happens all the time. The, the, I, I usually tell people with these cra crappy books, the worst part of the book, you don't need to read it. The worst part of the book is advertised to sell it. Yeah. The rest of it is probably yeah. just pabble. Yeah. Right. But then have you know, that brings me to how many of these Democrat supporters and Democrats themselves, women, have brought false rape, allegations against the, the is, Republicans and they never get punished for it well, but uh, then the one credible <laughs> rape allegation Tara Reid they call her a liar right with Biden yeah there's the same uh degree of evidence and probably more on that one as all of the other ones uh no there was no evidence yeah, on the other yeah. just an allegation yeah and in fact there was someone contradicting right uh, uh yeah I mean there's I mean, it's a totally police state. It's a it's a, it's a totally uh, two tiered system. Right. There are two systems of justice. Right. Which means there's no justice because there can never be two systems of justice. The minute you have two systems of justice, it means that one group is getting injustice. That's right. Uh, how about Trump is indicted for moving papers around Mar-a-Lago? The other guy isn't indicted. And Trump has a arguable right to take those papers as a president. Right. The other guy was vice president. No right to take any papers out of the White House. He took them as senator. It's, it's a, a criminal for a senator to do it. And he has them. He has them in every place I, uh, that I can. Chinatown. That I can, has them every place where it ha access to the people paying them. Chinatown, two institutes that are funded by China, and his garage next to a guy who was a business partner of the spy chief of China, his son. Oh, I didn't know that. His son, I'll show you the picture. His son passed those documents every day for, for a year. Wow. And he oh. was the closest guy to China. And there are, there are entries in the hard drive mm. that look like intelligence reports wow. reprinted by Hunter. Wow. And he couldn't have written these. So... <laughs> There's at least probable cause to believe that his was not just a, a dispute over who owns these documents, 
but he was doing it to 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 give some value to, to the country that gave him thirty billion dollars, uh, thirty million dollars. I mean, they gave his family thirty million dollars, and and they expect us to go, uh, you know, around like business as usual. You you and it's I scarier than hell. You and I remember the Cold War. Imagine, let's pick a Republican and a Democrat. Suppose uh, suppose Russia had given twenty million dollars to Kennedy or to Reagan. Yeah. They were. And they, he didn't tell us about it. And we found out about it. Impede step. I, I think down. they'd have been put in jail for the rest of their lives. Or hung. Yeah. And no matter how popular they were. I mean, if they and were I'm picking the two most treason. popular of their party, every Democrat would have turned on Kennedy in those days. Yeah. And every Republican would have turned on Reagan. Right. No matter how much they loved him. If they, it's unthinkable that they would have taken money from the Soviet Union. It's unthinkable that his family took money from China and we made him president. Yeah. Well. And then we can see the decisions that he makes that are pro-China or anti-American. Which is all of them. Right. Well, What's the Ukraine deal? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. There are so many things I want to ask you. Well, the what U about the movie uh, Dinesh D'Souza, Police State? Well, Police State is... Uh, unfortunately about as true as you can right. as you can be and it's a movie that if i saw it 10 years ago i would have told you that could never happen i would have said to you i'd have been like i, I, I probably would have gone crazy said, that never happened in america that's crazy those are the crazy conspiracy theorists right now i'm a crazy conspiracy theorist welcome to the winning team and also it gets very bad because now you can give me any conspiracy and I even know it sounds crazy, but I'll just say, well, let's just wait a minute yeah. and, exa and examine it. You, you know heard about Antarctica? No, I won't go into <laughs> it. But I, I mean, I'm obsessed with all that stuff. But what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna vote them out of office. That's what we're going to do. Well, will we even be around for an election? Well, I mean, you know, I know. look uh, what's Roseanne, happening. We got, it is, if, do you think Trump's going to go to jail? You think? Are you worried about your case? I mean... I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think they could get to the point. Well, if you take the case in Georgia, it's hard to see how they could get to the point of trying the case before the election because they got three in front of it. Uh, but in, in any event, even if they tried one or two of these cases against him, uh, the appeal wouldn't be over by then. And I'm just hoping that uh, Trump's lawyers take a case to the federal court Put them all together from the from what I, I call it a book. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on about chapter 10 of Let's Frame Trump. It started with Russian collusion, then the hard drive being uh, uh, Russian right. disinformation, mm -hmm. for which I was I, I'm suing Biden for defamation. Good. I'm suing Biden for defamation because during the second debate, he said I'm a Russian pawn by name right. twice. He, mm -hmm. uh, he knew I wasn't. Right. When he said it. Yeah, that's defamation. They had, they, had, they had validated that hard drive eight months before. They knew it was mm -hmm. valid before I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they knew it wasn't Russian disinformation, and he said it anyway. Uh, but that, that stuck with me for 17 months uh, and with him. So they've tried so many attempts that I want them to put, put it together in one suit and say, hey, it's quite clear they violated his civil rights, and all these cases should be dismissed. They're not even crimes. I mean... Mm -hmm. the, and they're so poorly written. Yeah, I mean the the one in the one in Georgia. He's 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 questioning an election. I'm his his four lawyers are indicted for representing a man who's questioning an election and giving him the benefit of the doubt. What am I supposed to do, not believe him? I mean, uh, people people represent uh, uh, terrorists. Yeah, and we believe that that's a sacred right that they have. Right. But the, the, a, a president doesn't have the right to have counsel that's on his side i know and no i've got to agree i got i got to agree with the anti-american uh, uh swine in the newspapers <laughs> yeah no kidding i mean they've taken away all of his constitutional rights they can do that to the ex-president well they did it while he was the how, how about too. when they searched my off my, my house they searched my law office yeah. I, have, I have other clients yeah. right now you know what the result of that was a, a year and a half later, they send a letter to the grand jury. They couldn't find probable cause that I committed a crime. Well, well, then where? What? What was the probable cause for the search? For the search, right? <coughs> did you yeah. Did you lose it? I mean, what did, did uh, uh, Ray drop it somewhere? Uh, what about the Patriot Act that made all that stuff possible? 
Yeah, you know. What are we going to do about it? Can we, got, we do we, anything? Yeah, we're going to have to moderate that law. And the law does give uh, superpowers. But we did that th thinking we could entrust that to honest people to protect us. So some of those things are very valuable if used by honest and honorable people and very dangerous. And it's a shame because when we cut those back, which we're going to have to do, we're going to be not as safe in a certain way. Yeah. But uh, when you think of the daily erosion of our rights yeah, it's as against that. the one attack that might protect us from, we have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're, 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 we're not America. Any right now, No. in yeah. certain, c certain parts of America are not America anymore. New York is not America. Mm -mm. It's a, uh, New, New York City is a democratic dictatorship uh, right down to the judges. And that what? was part of the problem with the case. And it was the, it, they were smart enough to do their cheating on the home field. Right. They did their cheating in, think, right? Mm -hmm. Cro crooked Philadelphia, crooked Detroit, crooked Atlanta, Arizona. crooked Maricopa County, right. uh, uh, Milwaukee, County. crooked uh, Milwaukee. They, they didn't do it in places that are Republican or places that are neutral, that are in between, that go back and forth. These are places with the Democrat Party, like in f they didn't need Chicago. They could have used Chicago. They didn't have to. It's been Democrat for 58 years. Mm -hmm. And all it has done is deteriorate. I remember, I, remember, um, I remember the riots in Baltimore and the congressman who represented ba Baltimore got up and said, nothing's been done for this area of Baltimore in for 40 years. Well, he had been the congressman for 20 years, and his, <laughs> and his family had become millionaires. Oh, my God. And I know that game because as mayor of New York, uh, I replaced a mayor like that. I replaced a mayor who became a multimillionaire, although he had never worked outside of government. He became a multimillionaire because of bribes paid for, uh, to inner city broadcasting for cable television in New York. He was one of the people that could vote cable, and uh, he got a company uh, created for him and the company was a shell company and then they eventually s sold it to time warner wow. uh i mean a lot of that original cable business mm -hmm. is dirty as oh, you yeah. can get i mean there are a couple of big trials but in new york it was so dirty and and the polit democratic politicians in new york fought over the millions they were going to get new york was one of the last places to get cable new york city mm. because our politicians uh the crooks who ran New York, all Democrats, couldn't agree on the millions they were going to get. Eventually, David Dinkins got a couple of million, and he walks out and he tells his secretary, I finally became a millionaire. And the secretary was re ready to testify against him. And they even had a document that almost conclusively proved it. And the U.S. attorney wouldn't bring the case because he's afraid there'd be a riot. They, they control every aspect of uh, the black community's lives. Yeah, and it's the it's the blacks who have been left behind right. so you have a very vital middle class even rich black community now and i believe that over time and this is one of the things that a trump victory will do i believe they're going to start losing some of that which is why they're bringing in the you know exactly. in new york I don't, a lot of people in america don't know this but this is really sinister the new york city council has voted to allow non-citizens to vote i know so they're getting ready for this now it's been held up because it's hopefully unconstitutional. It is. But they'll, then they'll try to change the Constitution. But that's, mm -hmm. their, that's their big goal. They know yeah. they, you, can't, you, you can't keep people in sub subjection forever. Because uh, even if these people are poor and even if these people are hidden from things, it's a big world and they're seeing what's going on. Uh, so that, they're going to lose that eventually. And I think they're on the way to losing the Hispanic vote. I uh, do too, and I hope that all the uh, immigrants who are here illegally, if they are allowed to vote, please vote for Trump because, um, you know, he doesn't want you to live like the place you came from. Right. Fabulous. Well said. Very well said. God bless you. God You're bless a treasure. you. You're a treasure, and I loved having you Thank here. you. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani. See you next time. Why we were so nervous about uh, our having Rudy is because we kind of got, we're 
Jewish, so we're extremely paranoid, <laughs> especially what's going on in the world. We're so scared of everything. And so my son was like, he's really Jewish because he's about to be a father of two quickly uh, in a few months. But he said, I think we're getting catfish. <laughs> I don't think this is Rudy Giuliani. I didn't. And we tried, he goes, I've tried to call them. And they haven't called me back, and I think we're getting catfish. I did a whole. Really I did an elaborate scheme. Now I can tell but you guys. But he was pacing. Well, hold on. Sleepless. I called. I said we have to pre-interview the mayor just so I could hear your voice and make but sure it was, it was you. Know if it was you. That's why I did that call. And then today, when you guys kept were showing up late, I was like, I got tricked he by goes, AI. AI. Oh my goodness! It wasn't Rudy, and they're not going to show it's up. It's my fault. And they, you know, no, and it's okay. You met, we got to we got to the bridge, right? The first bridge. I understand. You know I what I did? I said. Uh, Ted, let's go to the other bridge. And then it turned out that the other bridge was more crowded than that bridge. <laughs> and of course, the two ladies didn't let me forget it. <laughs> well, we, we were so scared. We're like, we got catfish on my bridge. They let me, they let me know. <laughs> I said, he goes, what are we going to do if he doesn't show up? And I go, well, let's give him this. He's an older man. <laughs> and he I'm needs an alcoholic a more too. time. <laughs> are you? No. But they, I, am. They, I, mean, I am. I am. Yeah, I'm accused, we are. I'm accusing you. Oh. Well, anyway, I'm you glad. Do drink, though, I'm right? glad you're really here. Oh, you don't I do drink? drink, but I'm not an alcoholic. Oh, good, because I do I drink love too. Uh, I love wine. Oh, okay. we have to I go. love wine too. Thank you for not catfishing us, Mayor. Oh.